This video is brought to you by World of Warships. Hey Noble Ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking and today I'd like to dive in and try to understand a bit more deeply some of the reasons why the ancient Romans didn't go for a simple nose guard similar to what we see in, say, Norman helmets. Let's get to it. Welcome back to dive right into the topic. Recently, Matt Easton at the Scholar Gladiatoria channel released a very good video, this one here, you will find a link in the description where he talks about all the different advantages and some of the disadvantages, but mostly the reasons why oftentimes, both in the classical period and in the medieval period, knights, warriors, soldiers decided to leave the this area of the face open, so not covering it in either plate or any form of protection. He makes a lot of very interesting points, so I'm not going to go into the details of these things, I will mention some, but but today I'd like to sort of expand a little bit on what he said and talk about the Romans specifically. I mean, the Romans used loads of different kinds of helmets, but this is one of the most popular. It's a, an imperial Gallic type H, so it's typical of the imperial period. It's a very typical Roman helmet when we think of the Roman army, and rightfully so. They mass produce these ones. So when we look at a helmet like that, we understand that that's a design by choice, and therefore the fact that the face is completely exposed makes us think. And to tackle the actual topic of this video, when you compare it to a medieval helmet such as the nasal helm or the conical helm that, generally speaking, it comes with a nasal guard in some of its most famous versions, particularly the ones used at the Battle of Hastings in 1066, then one cannot help but wonder why did they not go for at least a nasal guard? I mean, at the end of the day, that would not change your ability to breathe, it doesn't change your ability to hear, it gives you no disadvantages and provides a little extra protection for blows coming this way. I think in order to give it a proper answer we need to realize the fact that it's a very complex situation and there are loads of layers of reasons one over the other then when put all together will create like in a puzzle an image that we can understand. The first reason that I think is important to realize is that a Roman legionary needs to be able to function in loads of different situations so the helmet that he is going to wear needs to be a helmet that can work in a multitude of situation. Heavy Roman infantry was not a specialized corps. They were great for open field battle, they were used for sieges, they needed to be able to fight loads of different kinds of enemies in loads of different kinds of terrains. Soldiers took care of both policing and military efforts. Soldiers needed to be able to march for very long distance and so this is one of the reasons why one of the great things about the cheek plates that are movable, which is a characteristic of the helmets chosen by the Romans, is that you can wear them on your bosom as you march. And another reason why that's important is because soldiers are also builders, so they need to be able to bring with them all of their equipment just in case they get ambushed. Ultimately, soldiers are also employed in the Navy and it's not like they're gonna get a completely different set of gear if they need to operate and function as sailors. And good luck being an effective sailor on a ship during a naval battle with a plate of iron or steel covering your face. This is only one of the reasons why they went for a fully opened helmet and we still haven't addressed why they didn't add the bar and we will after we check out the sponsor that made this video possible, World of Warships. What is World of Warships, you say? Well, it's a free-to-play game available on PC that features team-based sea battles. In other words, you can play it together with your friends in the so-called divisions. One of the things that I like the most about this game is the fact that it features over 400 historical ships that you can use against your foe as you stride through these beautifully made maps. The game has got stunning graphics and the weather even changes during battles. Not only, the game features five different classes of ships, such as the destroyer, battleships, cruisers, aircraft carriers and submarines, but if you are a customization freak like I am, well the game allows you to customize your ships too. Now one of the reasons why the game has got over 44 million players is because the game also allows you to do stuff that is kind of mind-blowing, such as having as the commander of your ship frigging Godzilla or Kong. You also have the incredible characters from Azul Lane and you can of course battle against giant monsters from Big Hunt. And this is just from previous collaborations, so what are you waiting for? Join the fun. 
Download World of Warship using the link in the description below. If you register into the game through the link that I've given you down below, you will have a huge starter pack. During the registration, use the code FIRE to get for free 200 Dublins, 1 million credits, tier 5 USS Texas, 20 Restless Fire Camouflage and 7 days premium account. So get ready for battle, enjoy my special code and have fun. And big thanks to World of Warships for sponsoring my video. Okay, all of that is fantastic, but still, we haven't answered the question why did they not put a single iron bar to give a little extra protection? And I think there are two main reasons for that. One is economical, and the other one is, well, battle reports. Let's begin with the second one, because let's be edgy. One of the characteristics of the Roman army was the fact that they would adapt depending on how their armies would function on the field. One of the reasons why they didn't feel the need to add an iron bar like the one in the nasal helmet is because probably most of the injuries sustained sustained by the soldiers didn't involve being thrust in the center of the face. And the reason for that could be the massive shield that they were using in combination with the rest of the gear. So in other words, maybe they would have added a nasal guard like the one that we see in later period helmets if a lot of soldiers were reporting that kind of injury in this area of the face. And that is why I feel personally that when it comes to, for example, Lorica Segmentata, they developed it as a response specifically to Eastern archers. So you have to imagine it this way, the Roman army is marching forward and of course they can use the Testudo, as we know, and that's already providing perfect protection against arrows. Yes, the occasional soldier might get unlucky and get an arrow in the face, but then again, in terms of numbers, when it comes to the Roman army, unless you have a huge number of people getting the same injury over and over again, they're not going to do anything about it because it won't matter in the grand scheme of things. And again, as the army proceeds and engages in hand-to-hand -hand combat, yes, when we try to rationalize it, we think, well, if I can see that the Roman helmet is, is has got a, an open face, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to thrust the guy. But I think naturally, for most people, the most common type of attack that you're going to try is this. You're going to try and hit the other guy in the head, which is why this is one of the most common protections developed when it comes to the earliest types of helmets that we see historically. And if you miss the head, where are you going to hit? The shoulder. And that's one of the main areas that the Romans do develop as they go forward. And you see the evolution of Roman armor, like on this video, lots of plugins on this one, because it probably got hit over and over again by people who were trying to hit the soldier in the head. And another point I'd like to make is that when you put a nasal guard, a nasal guard in the very center of a otherwise relatively round helmet like this one, you are protecting it from slashes, not really from precise thrust. And the Romans are already protected from slashes because of the big cheek plates. So what I'm proposing here is that if we were able to take a nasal helmet, go back in time and bring it and show it to the Romans, they would probably think that the nasal in the front, the nasal protector, is a waste of metal. It would not be a waste of metal for a normal knight on top of a horse. And generally speaking, even if you're fighting as infantry, I still think it would be a good addition. I think it's a good helmet, but I don't think the Romans would think so. Also because this links us to the next reason the cultural reason. We all have cultural perspectives and every culture, even though we are all human, still made specific choices that they believed to be the best option. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's always going to be the best option. It just means that that's what they felt it was good enough to do the job. For example, look at the difference between the European longsword and the Japanese katana. They're both bars of sharpened steel, and even though they wield similarly, they are still different. There are still choices, such as the smaller disc guard for the Japanese versus the cross guard for the European one, or the slight curve of the Japanese katana compared to the straight blades usually preferred in Europe. There are still small differences that we could consider to be cultural differences, also influenced by the sort of opponents, weapons and equipment that the soldiers and professionals wielding these weapons were facing. Finally, the economic aspect, which is not a small one. Remember that from a state's perspective, you don't want to cover every soldier in the best way possible, trying to prevent every possible injury to the soldier, because that would require a lot of specialized myths, money, and even though in the case of the Roman soldiers, it was the soldiers that were paying off their own equipment, but you would still need a lot of material, raw materials, professionals, and time. The Romans wanted their soldiers to be ready as quickly as possible, 
train them, equip them, go. So investing a whole bunch of resources, for example, even just iron or bronze that could be used for other things, such as weapons, for example, or even just to use them to build stuff, to protect areas of the body that are statistically a lot lower in their chances of being actually hit. Doesn't really make sense from an economic standpoint. Look at the police today. Most police officers, unless we're talking about riot gear or SWATs, will not have full body coverage. What we cover for police officers is center of mass. In the majority of cases, officers, when they do get shot, they will get shot center of mass. There are, of course, exceptions to this, and it's not a perfect comparison, but I think it kind of works in helping us understand that fully protecting every single inch of every single person that is working for you, either in the military or policing, is not always the best choice when it comes to the government's perspective. Also, imagine the comfort of everyday life of a policeman when he's trying to do his patrol in full riot gear everywhere he goes. I mean, imagine going inside the car with a full riot shield, for example, and then having to take that one out every single time you need to stop someone for a ticket. And I think that this explains why they also didn't go for something like this, which they could have perfectly made. Because yes, this is a medieval barbut, but it looks a lot like a Corinthian helmet of the classical period, which of course the Romans knew exactly. And again, as you can see here, I can breathe, I can see. It's giving more protection, but this is solid protection, which means this is not the easiest thing to carry. Um, you can't do the little trick that I told you about to wear it on your bosom, even though it still provides good good peripheral vision, it's not perfect peripheral vision, and at the end of the day, if most of their soldiers weren't getting hit here, who cares, would be their answer. And on the flip side, this means that it is my opinion that if it did happen, that they found somehow a, an enemy that was extremely good at exploiting the fact that Roman helmets were open-faced, either because they could go through the shields very easily for whatever mechanical reason, like say, medieval crossbows, or I don't know, extremely skilled combatants that could do just that very well, then I'll be telling you, the Romans would have done this. They would have gone into a more protective helmet, and who knows, maybe even more than this. But of course, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you were a soldier, would you feel defended enough with a Roman helmet, or would you rather uh, had hoped that they could have given you something more similar, or more to a, say, gladiatorial helmet with full face protection? What have a sort of disadvantages that would give in terms of breathing, overheating and whatnot. Well, let me know what you think in the comments below. Again, big thanks to World of Warship for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check out the link in the description. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye. <laughs>